Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor of the Tenkar's Tavern blog. This is going to be an important video, I think. But if you like what you watch and see and hear, subscribe, like, comment, and if you like Trail of Cthulhu, there's a link in the bottom of the screen where you can go and grab the Humble Bundle for a very cheap price and help support the Tavern. So let's get right into it. Andy Markham, Andy Markham, also known in the past as Action Andy on Google Plus and Blogger. Uh, Andy is a very loud voice in the OSR. Um, we have a history. But here, let me explain what's going on at the moment, and then we'll take a step back into history. Andy Markham, Dan Jiva Jacobs. It's because of Eric Tenkar, who in my opinion, is the root of all the OSR's problems. He plays both sides from his bully pulpit while lying through his teeth while calling it reporting. Quotation marks in the reporting. He's made of lies. Like a gingerbread man is made of gingerbread. Your tenka is made of lies. Um, Angel Baker. Oh, Andy, uh, he's playing both sides. Supports the oppressor. Laugh out loud. So, what's going on here? What's the history with Andy? Why do I seem like I get free rent in Andy's head? He's often talking about me. He's like, oh, Tinker's always talking about me. No, dude, I, you're not on my radar until you start talking shit. Honestly. So, why am I built on lies? Well, let's go back to a little history with Andy. Personal history with Andy. Uh, back in the G-plus days, so we're going back... Oh, wait, half a decade or more. Um, Andy told me that I abuse my influence and authority because I don't use it for the powers of good. And who defines what the powers of good are? Well, that would be Andy and his cohorts. It wouldn't be me. Now, I use my influence and authority that you, my listeners, or the readers of my blog, or those of you that follow me on social media, give me to encourage gaming, right? I don't care what your politics are, what your religion is, how you identify, what your ethnic background is. You sit at my game table, we're going to game. If we're going to talk gaming, we're going to talk gaming, right? That's what brings us together. That's the tie that binds. But Andy wanted me to use whatever influence I have over you for his aims, his political desires. And by me not doing so, I was, of course, the enemy. So, um, this is also the, the era of Contessa, uh, Stacy D, Del Forno. Uh, Stacy went to North Texas one year. And Looked like she was having a grand old time. I would see her running games in the atrium, which was the hotel's big open area. And I would see that, and I'm like, oh, there's Stacy. Okay. I'm not going to approach her. Me and Stacy didn't have a great online relationship going on. There was a little tension going on. But also, she was running games. I'm not going to go up and introduce myself as she's running a game and interrupt it. But, and, and by the way, uh, Bad Mike at the time, believe that Stacy had a good time. She seemed to be having a good time. That's what she was he was told. But then she did this write up on social media about how awful North Texas was. And of course there was a comment that uh Ten Car saw me, but he never approached. Well that means that she saw me and she never approached me. And she also made a comment about Rachel. That Rachel was always by my side like a a puppy or a dog. And for those that don't know, Rachel happens to be legally blind. So in a strange environment, we're likely going to stick fairly close together. Just how things work out. She also uh, slighted uh, Mo Rasmussen, and it was either Tim Cask or Jim Ward, I forget who, was the second GM that was running games just for women. And... Uh, so it would be a safe area for women to 
who aren't maybe like maybe their spouses of gamers that just go to con because they're joining their spouse. That's how Rage got into gaming initially. And then they can relax and enjoy. And so she attacked my wife. She attacked a convention that I enjoyed going to. She attacked Mar Rasmussen, a genuinely good man. Um, so I'm sure I responded in kind. And at the time, there was, some, there was some pushback, of course. And some of that pushback came from two very large personalities in gaming. Uh, one being Dyson, who was uh, nice enough to PM me a rant, cursing me out, uh, and then before I could respond, blocked me. That's, that's slick. And uh, Andy. Now, Andy didn't block me, but Andy threatened me with physical violence. I believe, in retrospect, he was protecting the fairer sex that he felt was un being duly, uh, unduly persecuted by this rabble-rouser. Uh, but there was that, that threat. I didn't take it seriously. It's internet muscle, right? Many people have internet muscles. So, first Shire Khan, who comes up to me, but Andy Markham, and gives me like this, I don't know, half pat, half hug type of deal. Good to see you. And Rich is like, uh, who the hell is that? Like, how do you know? I'm like, what's Andy? And she's like, Andy Markham? I'm like, she's like, him? I go, yeah. She goes, he threatened to like punch you or some shit like that. I'm like, yeah. But, you know, what's said on the internet often gets forgotten in real life. <sighs> Whatever. Now, I've, so, I've told this story or in private. I don't, I've never shared it on a video before, I don't believe. I never put it on the blog. I never put it up as a Facebook post, but I've shared it in private. And Andy's heard I shared it in private. So I'm sure now. Andy says it never happened. Okay. So that, that I'm sure, is line number one. Now, here's here's line number two. Um, and and this, this part is, there's no dispute. Andy's first Facebook account was banned by Facebook. Right? There's no disputing that. His first Facebook account was banned. And before it was banned, Andy was going around calling people Nazis and saying, what do you do to a Nazi? You punch a Nazi. Right? Give it a little hook, maybe, but you punch a Nazi. That's what Andy was going around saying. And the people I was speaking with, who maybe had a bit more knowledge, I thought, than I did, said, yeah, Andy got banned from Facebook. I was like, oh, I was wondering where he was. Um, and they're like, yeah, he got banned for Threatening to punch Nazis. Now, this is where the tale diverges. This is what I was told. This is what I was done the impression with. Andy, when he was trying to bring me into the fold and told me I was okay because I was a, uh, I was just right of center. I think were the words he told me. I was just right of center, so I was not like going to be the one sent out to the camps in the end, you know. I I, 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 I didn't have to, like, be persecuted. Um, I guess, of course. So Andy used to supply me with, uh, just like people supply me now with everything that goes on in the leftist, progressive communities, especially if they're talking about me or if they're attacking other people. I get screenshots. Andy was giving me such screenshots from a conservative movie group. Now, I already knew they were talking shit about me in the conservative side. And by the way, folks, I hope you're recognizing that I am certainly making enemies on the left and the right. Not just to the left and just to the right. The extremes, the zealots. And we'll get into zealotry later. But these are the people that Truly, truly do not like yours, yours truly. So, 
Andy told me that this meme, the one that you see up on the screen now, with Hitler being punched out by Captain America. This is from like a 1940s comic book of Captain America. Um, this is the meme that got him banned. Not, not threatening violence to people on the internet because they disagree with his thoughts. And maybe some of them were assholes. Maybe some of them were bigots. Maybe some of them were fucking, you know, racist and uh, and and transists or sexist or misogynists. I don't know what they were. But Andy was going around, and that was his way of, you know, Nazis get punched. Punch a Nazi. Um, he told me to get my story straight. This meme is what got him banned. Nothing else, this meme, nothing built up to it. He posted this meme, he got banned. There was no, no nobody was having an issue with him threatening to punch out. This is the meme that got him banned. So that would apparently be line number two. I don't know what other discrepancies uh, Andy and I have because we don't talk. We don't communicate, we don't really overlap. You know, Andy just likes to... Exactly. He's, I, he has a personal grudge. He's had it for years, and uh, I'm, I'm giving you the basis as to why. From his perspective, I'm sure it's very valid. So, same group. And this, I just thought, I found this to be interesting. Same, same group. Same uh, uh, people. And, and by the way, um, Daniel Fox is a prominent member of this group. Daniel Fox is rumored to be the, and when I say rumored, we're pretty sure because he take credit for it, um, to be the one that took down the Trove piracy site. And I'm not saying piracy is good. Piracy is bad. Uh, Bogdan Flark. Uh, sorry, sir, for screwing your name up, but you're probably happy I did because I'm exposing something for you. Uh, I've run Barrel Maze like a half dozen times. In different settings. So he loves Barrel Maze. Run it a half dozen times. But I've always used a community shared copy. It's still available out there. So what is a community shared copy a euphemism of? Well, Aaron Walt goes, uh, pirated? And Bob Din was like, pirate flag. So they, they openly talk about piracy in the OSR RPG group. So long as you're pirating the right material. What's the right material? Apparently, it's good material written by the wrong people. That you can pirate. That is fine. Because the victim, which would be Greg Gillespie, um, well, you know, it's good. You pirated, you ran it six times, and, and Greg Gillespie never got a cent of it. That was a morally good act. Right? That's how it works, right? So, let's move on. Zealot. Okay, what, is the, what does a zealot mean? A person who is fanatical and uncompromising in pursuit of their religious, political, or other ideals. That's from the Oxford language. Now, same thing. This is from the Britannica Dictionary. Zealot. Often disapproven. A person who has very strong feelings about something, such as religion or politics, and who wants other people to have those feelings. A zealous person, religious zealot. Fanatics. Now, I'm not saying that everybody in the OSR RPG Facebook group Again, that's the one with the rainbow flag. Um, is a zealot. But Dan, there are a number of zealots there. I'm not saying everybody in the conservative OSR group over on Miwi is a zealot. But yes, there are a number of zealots in that group too. Folks, we're in 2023. We are entering the American political uh, presidential cycle for the election next fall. There is this 
fucking battle going on. And the vast majority of us, if you're watching this channel, if you're watching me, if you're listening to me, um, you're likely, like, like we got these two extremes, and you're likely, like, like right here in the middle, right? Maybe on some issues you're a little left, on other issues you're a little right, but you're generally a moderate. Or if you're not a moderate, and you lean further to the, well, my screen's backward, but to the left or to the right, whatever, um, you are at least tolerant. The zealots are intolerant. They're intolerant. That's part of the definition. Uncompromising. So if you are just to the right of a zealot who's on the far left, or if you're just to the left of a zealot that's on the far right, they're going to see you as the enemy. So what is this? what do I mean by that? Well, Luke Gygax, who I'll be honest with you, I like Luke, but you can't get much more milk toast, neutral middle ground than Luke when it comes to politics. Luke, yesterday, this is uh, the weekend, this is Sunday the 10th, so I believe it was the 9th, um, was literally driven out. He left the OSR RPG group because he was attacked because of his privilege. And what was his privilege? Uh, to be moderate, to 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 socialize with people on the left and on the right and try to bring gamers together. What an evil, evil... Pe no, no, he's not the evil one. The evil ones are the zealots. Okay, and I always say, and I, I'll say this again, politics and social issues are important. And for some, they are extremely important. They're very passionate issues. But the same people who talk about safe spaces where they need a safe space on our colleges and such. Well, you know what? I need a safe space in my gaming. When I got, we got gaming groups, the, the regular OSR group, Stuart Robertson's OSR group. No politics. Uh, GP Adventures. No politics. The Tavern, Ten Cars Tavern Facebook group. No politics. Why do we have these no politics rules? Because, yes, people are passionate about their religion. They're passionate about their politics. Politics and religion are, are getting strangely intermingled. And what we always say about, like, you know, family gatherings, we don't talk politics, we don't talk religion, because nothing good is ever going to happen from that discussion. You're never going to convince somebody on, on, on a polar opposite of you. And when you attack the people in the middle, they learn to resent you. And that's what happens. So if you happen to be a moderate, or at the very least, be tolerant, I thank you. I really do. So just be wary that over the next 12 months, it's not just one side, although one side right now is a bit more active. You are going to be targeted because you're in the middle. And you're targeted, and I'm not sure if it's necessarily because uh, they fear you're going to be an influence against them, or that just because you're not going to be an influence for them. You don't have to be an influence for anyone but yourself. And you don't have to be passionate about anything but what you want to be passionate about. That's the great thing about living in a free society. Ignore the zealots. Ignore them. That is the most painful thing you can do to them. Is ignore them. So, folks, on that note, next live stream is Wednesday. We should have a special guest. Should be Shadow Dark related. Uh, no, it's not Kelsey. Um, and as for live streams for Friday and Saturday, Rich and I go into ShireCon, so I don't know how that's going to play out for the live streams, but we will see. 
Be safe. Be well. God bless. Roll those dice. Roll them well. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Thank you for listening. Like I said before, please subscribe, like, comment, and uh, best of all, thank you. All right, folks. Later.